Welcome back to Drawing Worlds. This is the DMG from the DMG Info Channel and 70 System. And of course, uh, once again, we are going to be doing some fantasy black and white line art artwork. And this time, this is going to be a dragon. Uh, if you'd like to support the making of this channel and my other channels, please check out all the links in the description below. So I'm beginning once again with the pencil under sketch. I'm using a technical pencil. And I am draw. Uh, you may be able to see there. I drew a central line. So basically, I drew the central line uh, in order to find the midpoint for symmetry, and that is basically so that uh, the two sides of the dragon's face uh, are become roughly sim similar. I'm able to then judge distances and that kind of thing, but they're not going to be 100% identical. So there'll be a little bit of lopsidedness and, and that sort of thing. You don't want it to be 100%. Of course, when you're doing things like human faces and things like that, beauty is often seen in things like symmetry. So then you would probably want to um, to do more, um, more mirror-like symmetry in a face. Um, but in this instance, um, dragons, in my opinion, are not beautiful creatures. They're ugly creatures. And so I used a variety of uh, reference photos for this, for the different parts of the dragon's face. So I tend not to look at what other people have done uh, in terms of dragons when I'm creating artwork. I prefer to look at bits and pieces of other uh, um, photos and things of actual creatures and then model what I'm doing on that. So this I use reference photos from Komodo dragons, uh, from crocodiles, alligators, uh, and large lizards, as well as a couple of um, dinosaur. They wouldn't have been photos of real dinosaurs, obviously, but they would have been photos of uh, sculptures of dinosaurs. So using those as reference for texture and form, um, I decided on what this should look like, and of course, I want the dragon breathing fire at the viewer. So I used stencils for the round eyes to get the pupils correct, so you get that sort of ominous stare. And um, once I'd finished the under drawing with the um, technical pencil, which is a 2B technical pencil, um, I then did all the line work with a brush pen. Uh, and again, the symmetry is symmetry of form, not exact symmetry of line. So, you know, you're trying to keep everything um, centered and you want to build up the form with the texture and the shadow work, which is what I'm beginning to do now. So I'm just using a uh, brush marker to go around the edges of the fire. Now, what's interesting about fire, obviously... Um, Fire is something that's difficult to illustrate in a mon monotone color because um, it's not white, it's not black, it's not gray, um, and it's a light. So I tend to use certain shortcuts to represent fire, um, and this is what I call the licking method. So I do little swirls of circles that connect to one another to look like... Um, a f almost like a fractal lick coming out from um, whatever the source is. I oftentimes use this for things like wild water, fire, uh, explosions, that kind of thing. And it's just for me as a shortcut of uh, a shortcut way of illustrating it. So in this, obviously, the fire is the light source. And so um, I'm not going to high detail into that. There's only a few marks to represent changes in the fire and of course I've used the brush marker to go around the edges to have a high contrast between a completely black background and the white of the fire. So <coughs> excuse me. So that is then replicated in the high contrast shadows that then run from the horns and to the back of the head and on the top of the snout of the dragon. Um, so the light source is the fire coming out of its mouth. And once we go through and start to do all the texturing, you then, having that as a light source, you then can basically put your shadows where they need to be 
and sell the texture a little bit more. So again, I used photographic reference of variety of different creatures to kind of come up with how the scale patterns would look uh, and function on this. Some of it's from memory, some of it's from actual photos. Um, and yeah, again, using the brush pen to create the scales um, that flow over the form. Now, of course, it's still a bit flat, so we need to go and make sure that the texture volumizes the image. And um, that's what I begin to do here when I go over again with the brush pen to add in the shadows that aren't the full black shadows. So that's not the, the extremely high contrast black, which you see behind the horns there. And this is the interstitial shadows. That's a great word, interstitial. Um, uh, and then once the shadow's done, a little bit of um, a little bit of texture work underneath that, and then working on the texture, we'll begin to do that with some of the fine liner pens and the friction ball point pens and things. So I, I have listed in the Amazon links the different types of pens that I have used that I found that Amazon sells. Um, some of the stuff I've purchased in Japan or in Australia or on Amazon. Um, I'm a bit of a pen collector, so I've got all kinds of different pens. Um, and I like to, once I find a type of pen that I like, I probably buy like 50 of them. So I've got a whole pile. So again, we're now going through and texturizing the scales using the light source as a reference to where the shadows should be. So again, with high contrast, you're going to have the light down at the bottom and the shadows are going to be towards the back. And this gives it that depth. So before it was quite flat, and you, as you can really see now as you go with the scales, it's starting to pop out of the page. Um, and that's really what we're going for. You want that sort of head sticking out of the darkness, breathing fire at you. So not a super long-winded process to draw this image. Uh, in total, it took about an hour and a half. Um, but of course, you know, with these sort of things, there is a lot of work. And so the reason, once again, why I like to use a lot of high contrast shadow is because it actually does reduce the amount of time that it takes to do certain aspects of these drawings. Um, but, you know, you, you could, got, could have got the basic line work done in 15 minutes um, and left it at that. But, you know, then, you know, you move on and go on and do other things. You would have seen some of those. In my Tiltonians production, um, I did a more basic line work uh, in that, and so, but those images tend to be quite cartoony and flat. So you're working on those uh, horns, the little spikes coming out of the brow ridge. Uh, you can see those sort of add a little bit more shape to them, um, and of course, with the contrast of the shadows behind them, it gives it a little bit more three dimensionality than it had before. And really, it's now about touching up. And what I tend to do, you would have seen throughout this video, is I tend to work on one side and then the other side on the same point. So again, with the symmetry, I worked on the eyes here and then worked on the other eye so that you're maintaining the same sort of hand movement and texture as you're going. Because the problem is if you work on one area, then go to something else and then work on the symmetry on the other side. Uh, it may, your sort of memory of what you did may falter and then you get a kind of strange look to it. Um, I used to do that a long time ago, but uh, not anymore. So here's my nice 30 millimeter nib. It's a great little nib for quickly filling in large areas of black. Um, that was a great buy. And yes, I've discovered that storing that with the nib side down um, keeps the nib hydrated incated with ink, <laughs> um, ink hydrated. And so um, it means it flows much better uh, first time rather than having to shake it and do things like that. So we're getting close to the end here. Again, we'll just fine detail touch-ups now and little bits of shadow here and there on the bits and pieces of different scales, um, making sure that the scale work uh, has good contrast to it so it's visible at different sizes. And really then going through and checking all the shadows and texture and everything to see if it's up to what I want and if it needs any more work. So really that is uh, pretty much most of it. Uh, just a few touch-ups here and there 
erase the under underlying drawing, and there you have it. A dragon's Breath. How can you get cool stuff and support the channel? Buy things like t-shirts, mugs, tank tops, miniskirts, duvet covers, phone covers, tablet covers, and of course my personal favorite, throw pillow covers, from redbubble.com forward slash people forward slash the DNG info. Link in the description.